Ladies and gentlemen, Sydney Lumet. Thank you. Thank you very much. You came out on a terrible night, so let's get to work. <laughs> so, um, congratulations. You're American master, and I also know uh, that you just recently received an honor. What is it? You're the commander of the French Legion of Honor. Is that what it is? Tomorrow. 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 Mazel tov. <laughs> tonight, I, tonight, I'm still a nice guy. Yeah, what does that do exactly? You know, the French Legion of Honor, the French are not that combative. I don't think they're going to put you out to battle, are they? What are you going to do? They're, they're terrific. And uh, they, as far as I know, I think they were maybe the first government to ever uh, give the nation's highest honors to it to creative people yeah, when they felt like it. It's funny you said that. You know, I was thinking about this. You know, the French have a, a sort of very interesting and curious fascination uh, with Jewish filmmakers. Uh, Jerry Lewis. Uh, right. Woody Allen. And Sidney Lumet. My God, it's true. Yeah. They and the rest a, of the time, they're anti-Semitic. I was just so going to say... <laughs> they, love Ameri they love American Jews. It's the rest of the Jews they don't like. French Jews they don't like. <laughs> so, since you brought it up, uh, we are, in fact, Sydney, at the YMHA. Right. You are a member of the Jewish uh, tribe. Faith. Faith. You are a member of the, you are a member of the, you're tribal. You're right. a member of the tribe. Um, you, uh, you grew up in the, during the Depression in the Lower East Side into a family of Yiddish actors, and as you saw from our Danny Anker American Masters film, there's pieces of you as an actor at the age of 14. Can you tell us what it was like living? Many people are fearing we're headed towards the Depression. Uh, tell us what it was like to have been a Yiddish actor during the Depression. There's nothing happening now compared to then. Um, I'm, I'm just about serious. I know a lot of people are suffering, but um, nothing was worth anything, period. Schluss. You, that that co-op you've got that uh, has fallen 30 to 50 percent in value in this past year, you could not give it away in 1932. I'm not kidding. You could not give it away. There was nobody with enough money to take it. And uh, and you know the the few who uh, could afford anything, they were just going up and down Fifth Avenue buying anything they wanted. And yet you had a very very unique t look at the Depression on stage and on radio. Is well, it was, it was wonderful. I, you know, uh, people always say, wasn't it tough being a kid actor? That's nonsense. It kept me off the streets. It was, uh, it was a terrific way to live. First of all, I, I'm a firm believer in getting exposed to creative life as early as possible. And then the... Um, it was fun. I mean, actors are fun and the theater is fun. And how'd you do homework? What homework? <laughs> uh, uh, there, there, there wasn't that much, you know. And, uh, and if you were halfway smart, you could ice it like that. And, and your father, Baruch Lamet, was actually a, a significant uh, Yiddish actor in those days, and you actually appeared in a number of his productions. He was right? terrific. He was a wonderfully talented man. Um, never got out of his life what he should have because he could never get rid of the accent. Uh, he also had some personality problems, like being totally unpleasant. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, but you, he, found, he found parts in Sidney Lumet movies. He plays uh, Mendel in The Pawn Broker. Right. And he's also, if I recall, he's in Bye Bye Braverman. He is. Yes, yeah. and he's in the group. Yeah, he's in the, and he's in the group. Oh, no, actually, he's definitely in the group. I'm not sure about Bye Bye Braverman. He's definitely in the I group. Don't, I really don't remember yeah. Thaney. So he, you know. obviously, he was, he was actually, he, he listened to you. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, eventually you moved from the Yiddish stage to Broadway. Uh, in fact, you were very successful as a teenage actor. In fact, I think you, you play Jesus on Broadway. Twice. Twice. <laughs> I can see, see... <laughs> So, um, <laughs> well, they needed a Jewish actor for that. <clears throat> so, um, uh, 
obviously your Yiddish was impeccable, and then, yes. you, and then you moved on to Broadway where Yiddish didn't... Got better. Which, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this experience of being a, a Jewish actor, Lower East Side, a young teenage actor on Broadway, uh, does seem to inform some of the films. Certainly we saw some interesting scenes of The Pawnbroker. Uh, we know that film, at least from my mind, is a signature Holocaust film. Uh, for those who haven't seen it, you must. Uh, it is just, you know, absolute marvel. Uh, was there a deep sensitivity about your Jewish roots that led to the making of that movie in the mid-1960s? No, no, no. I, in fact, uh, I had some grave doubts about doing it because, you know, I, I really do think Elie Wiesel is correct in saying that don't take the Holocaust as a subject matter. You know, it's a, a unique, singular human experience, and uh, you're just not going to do it in a way that lives up to the size of the incidents. The incident. Having said that, of course, Spielberg went out and did a great movie about it. Uh, but uh, other than that, I think everything else has relatively been a failure, and to that extent, the pawnbroker is for me, too. I don't, we at least didn't exploit anything about the Holocaust itself in terms of the camps. They, just very little about those. It was interesting. Um, in the script, there were indications of using newsreel footage. And I remember I said to the producer, you know, there's no way I'm gonna do that. Uh, nobody died so I could make a movie. And, uh, so we redid all of that, and in very tiny snippets, it was a question of trying to find an image that would tell you something, uh, and then just going that far. Mm -hmm. uh, I was very proud of one shot of just a dolly along barbed wire, and you could see women's hands behind the barbed wire, and all you could see were the hands. It was a very tight shot. And you saw a uniform go by behind them, pulling the wedding rings off. And, uh, but, but, but I'm very glad uh, I haven't done another one, would not do another one.